our main goal today is to get to the theorem that is theorem 5.3 in the book, that is actually a big and important result. But the proof of it should be something that all of you understand, that is basically building on just being able to count things. So we will get to that theorem that says there are some functions that cannot be computed without big circuits, right? which is a, a pretty important theorem. So this is theorem slightly reworded, what's theorem 5.2 in the book, which is actually kind of strange, the way it's written. So it's a theorem that says for every natural number s, so we define size of the set of all functions that can be computed with a nan circ program of at most s lines. So this is kind of analogous to counting the number of NAND gates, but it's not exactly the same as that. It's very precisely defined here that we're counting lines in a nan circ program and we have defined what a nan circ program is. Right? So what the theorem is saying is for every natural number, the number of functions that can be computed by a NAND circuit of that size. Size of S is a set of functions, and we're counting the size of that, and we're saying it's less than two to the big O S log S. So if you remember well what Nathan presented about what big O means, this should really bother you. Because what is that actually saying? What is big O S log S? It is a set of functions. Does that make any sense to raise a number two to the power of a set? Something wacky is going on here. Right? This definitely does not mean what it says if you interpret it literally. The notation that tends to get used, this is a set of functions. It doesn't make any sense to raise a two to the power of a set of functions. It's a type error. It doesn't make any sense. So this notation, actually, there's a lot implied in this way of using the notation that people kind of accept without really reading it carefully and trying to figure out what that means. So what do we think it actually means? What is the exponent in that power? Because it can't be a set of functions. So what is the cardinality of, let, let's do an easier one first. What's the cardinality of the set big O1? How many functions are there? And we'll use your, your intuitive notion is that they grow no bigger than a constant. How many functions are there? Many. Yes. There are infinitely many, and we won't try to answer now whether it's countably infinite or uncountably infinite. So these are definitely infinite. So that's definitely doesn't make sense as the exponent either. Especially, it better not make sense if it's infinite, and we've got a less than or equal to here, because, well, I guess it would be everything, right? It wouldn't be an interesting number. So what else could it mean? Yeah. Yeah. So there's got to be some kind of hidden implication here that we're finding some function in this set. It could be something like this, or maybe it's a for all. Which one of these do we think it's going to be? Which one of these two should it be? Should it be there exists some function in that set or for all functions in that set? What are examples of functions in this big O S log S set? Is the function, is that in that big O S log S set? Yeah, the function that always outputs one is in that set. If this is going to mean something or if this is correct, this is definitely not correct for all functions in that set. This is a function that's in that set that 2 to the 1 is 2. This is definitely not less than or equal to 2 for all s. So it can't be for all. It better be there exists. What's hidden in this statement, if we think of it more carefully, and, and the way this is actually in the book, there's a little footnote there that says, we actually know the constant, and instead of the big O, we could put 10 or something. Specific function that exists that satisfies this. So what does it saying? There, there exists some function in this big O such that this is true for that F. But it's also, we have to be a little careful, like because the big O is for all N greater than N zero. So it's not for all N that that happens. So this is a pretty weird way of stating what could be a simpler theorem, but it's more, at least it's viewed by people that get really comfortable and maybe more comfortable than they should with asymptotic notation as more convenient and proper than just saying, let's pick this function that we know works, that is in that set. But that's, that's what must be implied by the way this definition is written. 